An industry typically goes through five main stages. The embryonic stage, where the industry has just started. The growth stage, where the industry growth is rapid. The shakeout stage, where competition intensifies. The mature stage, where growth stagnates and firms consolidate. And the decline stage, where the industry growth is negative. Let's go through each of these stages. An embryonic industry is one that has just started. Growth is slow at this stage as customers are unfamiliar with the product. Prices are high as the production volumes are not yet sufficient to achieve meaningful economies of scale. Competition is limited as there are just a handful of companies. The companies require large investments to develop and market the product and the risk of failure is high. A majority of startup companies do not succeed. If sufficient companies succeed and create a sizable market, the industry progresses to the next stage. Growth in demand is high in this stage, as more customers discover the product. Prices fall as economies of scale are achieved and as distribution channels develop. Even though there are many new competitors entering the industry, competition remains relatively limited as the rapid growth in demand enlarges the pie for all so all companies can grow without undercutting each other. Industry profitability improves as volumes rise and economies of scale are attained. This honeymoon stage will not continue indefinitely as growth in demand will begin to slow. This is known as the shakeout stage. Demand starts to reach saturation and companies have to compete for the few new customers left to be found. Excess capacity begins to develop as the growth in demand is not able to keep up with the growth in supply. This leads to price cuts and industry profitability begins to decline. Competition is intense as firms have to grow at the expense of other firms. During this stage, companies focus on increasing the survivability of the firm by reducing their cost structure and building brand loyalty. Those who fail to survive either exit the industry or get acquired. Such an industry inevitably reaches the mature stage where there's little or no growth in demand. Those who want the product would already have it, so the demand is mainly for replacements. Industries often consolidate and become oligopolies at this stage, where a few large firms dominate the market. Such firms tend to just want to protect their market share and profitability, so they tend to avoid price wars leading to stable prices. Also, these surviving companies tend to have brand loyalty and relatively efficient cost structures, both of which are significant barriers to entry. Some companies may still continue to innovate with superior products or services. Such firms are likely to gain market share as buyers switch to them. And the final stage is the decline stage, where demand growth turns negative. Very often, this is due to technological substitution. For example, the video rentals industry has been declining for years as consumers turn to streaming networks like Netflix. Globalization also plays an important role, as several manufacturing industries in developed nations go into declines as retailers increasingly turn to low-cost manufacturers from emerging markets. Competition is intense as firms battle to survive in a shrinking market. As demand falls, Excess capacity in the industry forms and companies respond by cutting prices, which often leads to price wars. Further consolidation of the industry is possible as weaker companies often exit or merge with another company. An industry stage in the life cycle is an important component of the strategic analysis of the industry. When analysing the companies in an industry, an analyst should determine whether it is acting its age relative to the current stage of the industry. For example, if this company is in a growth industry, it should be using its cash to increase product offerings, increase economies of scale and build brand loyalty. It does not need to worry about cost efficiency yet and should not be paying out dividends to investors but conserve the cash for internal growth. On the other hand, a company in a mature industry may find few opportunities to introduce new products. 
so not much of its free cash flows should go to operations that generate growth. Rather, the company should focus more on cost efficiency, and the majority of the free cash flow that the firm generates should be paid out to investors through dividends or stock repurchases. Although life cycle analysis is a useful tool, industries do not always conform to its framework. Life cycle stages may be longer or shorter than anticipated, or they may be skipped altogether. This can be due to technological disruptions. For example, the music album retail industry went abruptly from growth stage to decline stage when consumers had access to download or stream music through the internet. Besides technological changes, other factors that can disrupt an industry include changes in government regulation, changes in society, and changes in population demographics. We shall discuss these factors in detail in the next lesson. Thus, life cycle models tend to be more useful for analysing industries during periods of relative stability. They are less practical when an industry is experiencing change due to external factors. Another limiting factor of models is that not all companies in an industry experience similar performances. A company can be in a growth industry, but its growth can be much lower than the industry average. Conversely, a good company can be in a mature or declining industry, but is growing rapidly. The key objective for an analyst is to identify the potential winners while avoiding potential losers. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.